Hello there, I've got something a little bit different today. It's the Scion Series 3 from 1991. And it's one of those personal organisers that you used to see floating about in, in the 1990s. This particular one, um, yeah, I think it was made in 1991. And it folds out rather neatly to a full QWERTY keyboard. And yeah, it's just a, a neat little pocket organiser. There were several versions of this. This was the first in 1991. Um, they brought out a version called the 3A in 1993. And I think that had a few extra features on it, like a, a microphone and what have you. You might also recognise it as the Acorn Pocketbook, because Acorn Computers actually released a version of this with their own branding on it as well. So yeah, this has been hanging around since, well, since Christmas actually. And I've been meaning to get around to do something with it, I just haven't yet. It generally works fine, but these icons up here, these are actually um, shortcut buttons. And these don't work at all, these are faulty, so I'm going to crack it open and see if that is something that can be repaired. Apparently it's a common failure point on them. And there's a, there's a membrane that can crack, and if that's the case, I don't know how repairable this is going to be, but... It shouldn't matter, it shouldn't affect the operation because you, you, they're not strictly necessary, but it'd be nice to get them going. And I, I want to have a poke around inside it anyway, so um, yeah, let's let's open it up and have a look. So yeah, basic features, it's got a um, database, a word processor, a calendar, the clock, of course, I presume that's just a world clock, calculator. Don't know what that is. Don't know. Around the side it's got a data port for connecting up to a home PC. I think in the top we've got, yeah, the batteries. Let's take them out actually. In the sides, well it's got two cartridge ports for additional software. And it's got a little lithium battery just to keep the real time clock going and the, the memory. Yeah. Let's see if we can get into this. So, I'm seeing a screw there, a screw there, row of screws there. Let's see what happens. Ah, so it just seems to unclip. And I think we're not quite there, but we're getting there. And there's a little springy clip that's come flying out as well, so I'll have to try and wrestle with that later when it goes back together. So what have we got? We've got two ribbon connectors. And a whole mess of circuitry. Now one of those ribbon connectors is going to be our faulty one. And looking at the way the cables are running, I'm going to say it's the, the awkward one at the back. Okay, so there's just a couple of little locking tabs I need to move to get this cable out. That's going to be fun. Well, that was horrific. There was no way I could do that with a camera around me. Uh, but effectively, all I've done is I've pushed back these two tabs on either side just to pop the cable out. Top one is for that little shortcut menu that's for the speaker and that is for the display so that's all been separated so that leaves us with the main board and the keyboard now this cable wasn't even attached properly it was loose in the holder so maybe that's the whole problem i don't know don't know it might be worth just putting a bit of contact cleaner on it and refitting it and it might just work. Well that's a membrane, I've got no chance of repairing that if it's faulty. So hopefully that's not the case, but we'll see. We'll see. I think I'm just going to give it a little bit of a bit of a clean and put it back and see if it works. 
Oh, yeah, the speaker fell out as well while I was wrestling with it all, but I'm sure that'll pop back in. So let's have a little close up of the guts while we're in here, and there's not a lot to see really. Everything's covered up with uh, shielding. But yeah, if you ever wanted to know what was inside one of these, it's it's not massively exciting. Neatly designed though. Okay, I've cleaned up all the contacts. Let's just try refitting it because I don't know what else I can really do with it, to be honest. Oh, on a side note, this little data port has a little spring-loaded cover on that you'll need to refit. So just bear that in mind. It goes... Well, it goes like that. So there's a little spring there. And when you insert your data socket, that pushes back. That's how that works. So if you take one of these apart and that comes springing out, like it just did with me, you don't need to spend 10 minutes working out how it went, like I just did. Anyway, let's try and get this connected. So let's, well, let's start by putting it in the right way. That would help. Let's start with the screen. Okay, one in. Now this was the one that wasn't hooked in properly and this is the shortcut menu. So let's just see if this will go back and if it does, if that's solved our problem, although I doubt it. Okay, that whole thing should now slot back in. He says optimistically, knowing that there's a fat chance of it going smoothly. Okay, I've been prattling about with this for a good half an hour now, and the only way I can think of getting this board back in this case is to detach the screen. I don't know how it came out, I really don't. Absolute nightmare. Oh, and this thing's popped off again, bear with me. I've just spent a good 20 minutes trying to get these springs back in because I couldn't find out where they slotted into, even though I took them out. There are two very, very small holes, sort of there and there, that the whole spring will slide into, and they're not obvious. hope this was all worth it. Let's see, I've put the batteries back in the battery holder, so let's hook it up. And before we screw everything back down, let's just see if it works. Well, there was a bleep, but no picture. Oh no, there we go. There we go. We're on. Warning, backup battery is low. Yeah, that's because I've taken it out. So, okay. It would appear that still isn't working. So that was a whole fruitless endeavour. Okay, do you know what? I tried. All screwed back together and while we're at it, let's have a nice new battery. Let's just throw that in there. There, that'll keep the settings. In fact, new batteries all round. Right, hopefully it's all still working. Seems to be. Okay, let me try and reposition the camera and we'll get a closer look at this. Right, as you can imagine, this might be a bit of a tricky thing to film, so I'll do my best and I apologise for the lack of quality here. But um, yeah, after all that, and oh, I mean, I'm not going to share the whole video that I filmed stripping this thing down and putting it back together. I'll show you bits of it because it took me forever. It was a really difficult thing to work on. But after all that, yeah, these buttons are dead still. So hey ho, never mind. I don't think they're needed. But let's take a look at what it does. So data first. Okay, so this looks like an address book. So put name in. Um, telephone, home and work, so 
Presumably. Okay, and tab to save entry. Entry saved, okay. How do I back out of this if I hit the menu button? Ah, there we go. So what can we do with this? We can open a file, we can save it, save as, merge with other files. Don't know what compress would be. Print, presumably when we got it hooked up to a PC. Be kind of cool. Insert text, copy text, bring text. I don't know what that means. Evaluate. There's a search function. Um, we can change the data. And we can put in tabs, word wrap, hide and edit labels, print setup, and what I'm looking for is exit. Okay. So that's data. Word, I am gonna assume is not Microsoft Word, but it's gonna be their own version. Well, assuming a word processor, and yes, it is. And what have we got on the menu? Open, save, save as, print, insert, revert. That's an interesting one. Scan, so if we're looking for a specific word, I suppose. And the replace function, which is always handy in a, in a word processor. Alter paragraph, styles, I wonder what that does. Define. Ah, so we can change the fonts. Okay. Amongst other things. I'm not sure how. I'll probably have to read the manual, which I don't actually have anyway. Okay. Back to menu. This is uh, looking like quite a competent little device actually. Agenda. I'm going to assume that's some sort of calendar function. Yep. So we've got a calendar. Can we add to that calendar? Yeah. I'll put a test in at 2pm. There we go. It's a menu. So we've got the same search functions and uh, we can print those as well. Time. Right, I put a new battery in it, so let's set the time. Let's try the alarm. So let's set it for 6.01. Oh, so it's got even got a snooze function. That is actually a lot more pleasant than a lot of PDA alarms. The snooze, how long does it snooze for? Five minutes. Okay, let's clear that because if I don't, it's going to be bleeping up me all the time. Okay, let's come out of that. I'm not sure I can get out of this menu without these buttons working, you know. I don't know. Okay. I found a way to back out of that um, time menu. Yeah, pull the battery. Not the most practical way. So it would appear you absolutely do need this, this bar to work. So there it is. You live and learn. Unless somebody knows a way of doing a soft reset, I don't know. Anyway, we'll continue. Time, world, what's that? World time, I mean, what else? What else could it be? Calculator is just a calculator. I mean, what else can you say about it? Let 
what else have we got? Program. I don't know what this is. Oh, okay. There's some sort of basic interpreter, maybe. Not entirely sure. So it's similar to the um, the likes of the Amstrad NC100 um, Sinclair Z88 in that respect that you can you can write your own little macros as well. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. Um, what else? You can adjust the contrast. There isn't a dial as such, but it's done in the software. So it's one of the shift keys and... Oh yeah. That works quite well. Yeah. All in all, in its day, especially given the fact that you can hook this up to a PC as well, this makes quite a powerful little organizer. It's quite a neat little thing. It's just a pity that these these buttons aren't working and without replacements being made, they never will either. Um, apparently they are known for breaking the hinges too, so that's quite a common failure point, but they're an interesting thing. If you if you see one going cheaply, then they're probably worth picking up as a, as a novelty. I, I certainly wouldn't pay a lot of money for them, given the fragility of these hinges and certainly this bar, which means if you get stuck on that time setting, you're not going to be able to back out of it without pulling the battery, but yeah, they're an interesting little thing. They're an absolute pig to work on. But um, yeah, I mean, if you can get one in working order, great. Great little novelty. Um, I'll leave that here anyway. So that's just a little look at the Scion, Scion Series 3. I do have a fondness for these machines. I've got um, an earlier model as well. Oh, I've got a couple of them. This is the um, P250. It's a, a similar sort of thing, not quite as versatile. This one particularly uh, is an XBT model, so, and it's still got the BT software on it, so it makes it kind of useless at the moment. But um, yeah, these would also be a cool little PDA. You could interface them into a computer as well. But um, yeah, this this really is just a a step up from from that. So yeah, I hope you found that kind of interesting it was it was really frustrating for me trying to take the thing apart struggle to put it back together only to find out that the thing still doesn't work properly but there you go i didn't pay a lot of money for it so i'm not going to worry about it anyway i'll leave this here and i will say thank you as always for watching um take care and i'll see you on the next one bye